Senior High Connections last week, we had a discussion on the passage in Philippians, and Don shared with us a quote by a commentator named Fred Craddock. It reads, Paul regards as inappropriate to the body of Christ the selfish eye, the pompous mind, the ear hungry for compliments, and the mouth that spoke none, the heart that had little room for others, and the hand that only served the self. Good morning, my name is Laura Chapman, and I'm a 10th grader at Tiger High School, and I'm the daughter of David Marsha Chapman. I've been a part of the Southminster Youth Program for five years, and I've had many opportunities to explore my faith. I've also been able to go on three mission trips so far. During confirmation class in the fall, Don asked me if I wanted to preach a sermon. A sermon. At first I thought, really? But then I thought, if God wants it, I better do it. <laughs> <laughs> so as our final hymn today says, here I am, Lord. I want to share with you a little bit of my personal journey of faith. A faith that has been impacted by my parents, family camp, mission trips, and being a member of a progressive youth group and church. Thank you for being such an important part of my journey. Many of you know of the concept of sweat equity. In our church's involvement with Habitat for Humanity, we know about families that would otherwise be unable to purchase their own home because of inability to pay. They contribute sweat equity hours to the construction of their own home, the homes of other Habitat for Humanity partner families, or by volunteering to assist the organization in other ways. Once these families are moved into their homes, the family makes monthly interest-free mortgage payments into a revolving fund for humanity, which provides capital to build homes for other partner families. This concept of sweat equity, it seems to me, is the whole point of doing missions. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, we learn what is needed for us Christians. Paul says, be of the same mind. This begs the question, what mind should we have? It seems to me that it involves the desire to serve. Paul is telling us that we are to be selfless in our service, humble in spirit, and willing to do whatever it takes to see that Christ is exalted in all that we do. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Paul says, but in humility, regard others as better than yourself. And then to illustrate his point, he talks about how Jesus had obediently done that very thing, even to the point of dying on the cross. And he says that if any would follow after Jesus, they must be willing to do that very same thing. I get tired just thinking about it. <laughs> but Paul tells us we are all partners in Christ's service, that our sweat equity as Christians, must be to be humble in spirit, selfless in service to others, and willing to do whatever it takes. Let me tell you a story I heard at camp one year that illustrates what it means to be humble in spirit. Once there was a very arrogant man. One day, he decided he wanted to know God. He promptly marched over to the nearest monastery and demanded a monk to tell him about God. Now, it just happened the monk was very wise. He told the man that he would show him God if the monk would meet the man the next morning at the river. The man agreed, and they parted. The next morning, the man went to the river, and he was just looking for the monk when he was shoved underwater. When the monk let him up, he was gasping for air. The man asked, what was that for? And the monk answered, when you want to know God as much as you want your next breath, only then can you know God. I find this a particularly striking story because it seems so similar to many of our own experiences. When one believes in God, one is occasionally able to hear God's word in all its pureness and goodness. Once such a thing is heard, we cannot wait to share it and convince others of its goodness. Unfortunately, once we have such an epiphany and experience the clarity and joy that it brings, we begin to believe that every thought we have pure and right. We begin to leave no room for argument. We do not allow others to challenge our views. Sometimes we are even <coughs> cruel and harsh in the judgment of those who hold opinions different from ourselves. In doing this, we turn our backs on God and those who would speak his word if we only had the hearts to listen. As partners in Christ's service, in our mission trip to Cuba and elsewhere, 
our sweat equity must be humble in spirit. I have learned that we must also be selfless. I recently went to a training to become a counselor at Camp Magruder this next summer. One of the things we talked about was that as counselors, we were third, as in God first, campers second, and ourselves third. This is a good policy for life, but it is sometimes harder than it seems. When you get cranky, it's easy to forget that you are just the third. When I have piles of homework and I am asked to do even one chore, I'm about to say, no. But then I remind myself that I'm just the third, and I get to it, if not happily, at least grudgingly. <laughs> If you've ever been on one of our youth work projects or on a mission trip with Don, you will remember that he calls Paul's words here the 11th commandment. In verse 14, Paul writes, do all things without grumbling or complaining so that you may prove yourself a child of God. Or as Don says, thou shall not whine. <laughs> as partners in Christ's service, in our mission trip to Cuba and elsewhere, our sweat equity must be selfless in our service. Finally, sweat equity involves being willing to do whatever it takes. I have learned of the joy that comes in a good day's hard work. There's nothing more satisfying than doing a job and doing it well. When I think of work that I enjoy, and I think when many people think of work, they rarely think of God's work. We're all very busy with all of our commitments, and sometimes it seems the last thing on our mind is, what labor does God require? Paul Farmer, a doctor and spokesperson for better medical care in impoverished communities, says he believes that the success of many large-scale social justice projects relies on the willingness of everyone to do unglamorous work. Sometimes what God asks us to do is not glamorous. Sometimes it isn't fun. Sometimes there isn't a free t-shirt for doing it. Sometimes you won't even get a thank you but that doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Don't be intimidated by this, however. It's my belief that the most important things are often the smallest things. Things like doing family chores without complaining, or listening to a friend when they've had a bad day. Things like reading to sick patients or planting a community garden. Things like sharing your lunch with a lonely stranger on the bus. The important thing is that you remain mindful of those things that you are not required to do but that God calls you to do. As partners in Christ's service, in our mission trip to Cuba and elsewhere, our sweat equity must be willing to do whatever it takes. I have no idea what to expect from the Cuba mission trip, but what I have learned from all of you and from my faith experience is that we will be humble in spirit by listening to people's needs without judgment. We will be open in our service by putting others first and we will be willing to do whatever it takes by doing the grunt work and whatever is asked of us. As partners in Christ's service, all of us, those who go to Cuba and those of you who support us, and all of us who do mission work in our communities, schools, and families, this is our sweat equity. So I leave you with this. Next time you participate in a Southminster workday, do it without grumbling or complaining. Next time you attend a congregational meeting, let others know that you are open to their ideas too. <coughs> Next time you attend the Cuba Mission Fundraiser or participate in service to others, do whatever it takes. We are partners in Christ's service. Sweat equity. It's our mission. Amen. <coughs>